So, hey Maho, thanks for coming and thanks for doing this interview with me. Um, why don't you start by just telling us a little bit about yourself and why you have an interesting perspective um, during these times. Well, hello, my name is Maho Garcia. I'm from Honduras and I'm a freshman. Um, I think this situation is just unprecedented and I love Drexel, to be honest, as a freshman. Everything I dreamed about was going to college and experiencing college. And I think it is important to count our blessings and be thankful for everything that we have. But I also believe that it is necessary to communicate the difficulties I faced as a freshman and as an international student so, you, so the university can evolve mm -hmm. and improve um, their contingency plan. Yeah. So you mentioned um, that you face some specific difficulties being an international student. Could you elaborate on what that looked like? It was a very hard time being on campus and receiving emails every, I don't know, 12 hours and just not knowing whether you could stay on campus, you had to leave campus, you need to come back to campus. And I believe the university did the best the, as they could allowing people to stay in the dorms. However, um, we were not communicated on time that we were able to go home without um, having any repercussions of leaving the United States for an extended period of time. So a lot of us couldn't go back home because the borders of our countries closed. And I think that really affected a lot of international students because it is not the same thing on campus alone than being at home with your family. So I was doing my finals and I was packing and it was just a very stressful situation that just didn't um, impact my term and my finals, but it is something that is still ongoing. So where are you living right now? So I've been bouncing around for a while now, but right now I'm living with my aunt in Texas. And how'd you end up there? So, during the first few weeks after everything, um, after the news uh, got out that we needed to either move out of the dorms or stay and apply for housing, I stayed for a couple of weeks with my roommate, which she's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the type of people who make your college experience. Um, after that, we were trying to get me home to Honduras. However, um, the situation didn't work out, the borders were closing, and it wasn't really safe for me to go back home because we were communicated too late that we could. Mm -hmm. So um, I literally just booked a flight Monday noon and flew that same Monday at night, wow. and I came here. Wow. We're still trying to figure out when I'm going to go home. Yeah, I'm really sorry to hear that. But it's I feel like it's nice, at least, that you're with family that you have family in the states right oh yeah i'm that's what i was saying i'm one of the few lucky ones that actually have people like my roommate and my aunt that they're here to support me but i know a lot of people who didn't know uh who to speak with and i know that the option was there for people to stay in the dorms however as i've said before it is not the same thing to be alone mm -hmm. and trying to cope on your own than having the support of your family and friends what are some ways that you feel like you've been able to cope or anything that you've done um, that's been positive during these times? I think, well, I'm a very positive person. I always try to think that even though we are facing some difficulties, we always need to be thankful for what we have. Mm -hmm. And I know that sometimes it is very hard to see the bright side when there's so many things distracting us mm -hmm. and making us focus on the obstacles we're facing. Yeah. However, I think that, especially today, I was doing a test and I have so much work to do for next week. And I just took a moment and took a, like a deep breath. And I was like, I'm here, I'm alive, I'm okay, we'll make it, we'll figure it out. Yeah, that's really nice. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad that you can have that perspective. Um, and then also you mentioned that uh, you're in a unique position because your freshman year got cut short. Um, how does that make you feel? Could you just elaborate on that as well? I think 
Um, as a freshman, we were all like in the limbo. We were just experiencing everything during the first term. We were trying to figure out where you fit in, what classes do you like, do you like your major, do you like your city, do you know where to go, who to talk to. And during winter term, you're we like, okay, I think I got this. If you didn't like something, you try to change it. If you do like it, you try to continue it. And then out of nowhere, you're facing the fact that you don't know what's going on. And I think it was a huge learning curve for all of us to figure out, okay, I'm an adult now. I need to make the decision whether, okay, do I go home? Do I stay? What do I do? Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of us moving forward this sophomore year, it would be a very, you know, difficult um, path to take because we don't know where we're standing at right now. We were just trying to take in one day at a time. And then, especially for people for co-op, people who are um, going for co-op during the fall and winter term, I know not a lot of my friends that have that cycle. And they're like, okay, what do I do now? But I think, um, like I said, be positive, use the resources. And I think this is a situation that has really challenges, like all of us. And we need to figure out ways to use our resources and use what we have to figure that out. Yeah. Okay, well, I think that's all the questions I have for you. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Um, I think I just wanted to say that I love Drexel. I think that we all do. I think that if we didn't, we wouldn't spend the late nights working or just, you know, pursuing our dreams and hopes in college. So you think that rather than um, criticizing the institution for what they've done, I think we should just be proactive, let them know what obstacles, what challenges they face, and that way, if this happens again, they know how to act, mm -hmm. and they know what um, parts of their contingency plans they need to improve, so all of their students, the faculty, and their staff feel safe and supportive. I love that. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me, and I really hope that you're able to make it home soon. Thank you.